Hey there, Matthew here. So I know it's been a couple weeks. I've had a band camp that I've been doing and along with uh, helping my mother uh, move out of her house uh, because she is getting ready to move to Thailand fully. So um, it's been a while, but I'm back and I'm ready to make another video for you guys. So today we're going over, I guess, the Sonos Roam right here, the Sonos Roam Bluetooth Smart Speaker that we did a comparison of this and the Flip 5 uh, because they are roughly the same size. Well, now we are comparing the Sonos Roam to the JBL Charge 5. Um, not because of the size, but more because of the price. Uh, the Sonos Roam comes in at $169.99 and the JBL Charge 5 comes in at $179.99 but you can find this on sale for a lot of times $149.99 uh, just depending on the time of year and season and all that so don't be perturbed by the price of the Charge 5. But uh, this is just a comparison between the Sonos Roam and the JBL Charge 5. So let's just quickly go over specs of both of these products real quick. Um, I know I've done the specs and all that with the reviews of each one of them separately, but we'll just go over them real quick just in case you didn't watch that video or see that video. But the Sonos Roam is a portable Bluetooth speaker. I would say it's a small portable Bluetooth speaker and it uh, retails again for $169.99. It uses Apple AirPlay 2, I believe. It also uses Bluetooth and it also has that smart functionality. So that means that this can connect to Wi-Fi and it can be used as a Wi-Fi Bluetooth system as well. It can kind of slide in there with the other Sonos speakers out there like the Sonos Beam, the Sonos Arc, and the Sonos One uh, system so you can have multi-room audio uh, which is really nice. The JBL Charge 5 here, uh, it also you can use it with multiple speakers as well but you do need the JBL um, app that allows you to connect this to multiple speakers but it does not do multi-room audio and it does not have that Wi-Fi specific feature but it does have some other great features that come with this to make this a very good speaker especially for the price um, but other than that uh, specs wise this does have a good amount of battery life in it because this is the charge 5 um, so charge being the key word, meaning that it can charge other devices um, with this. Uh, as you can see here, it does have a USB-A port. So you can charge other devices with a USB-A to USB-C or micro USB or uh, lightning cable if you want, which is really nice for this device. It looks overall really nice. They changed their logo a little bit from the old logo, if I can find it here. Here is the old logo and they changed it to this logo so that's really nice that they do have that. It kind of modernizes the logo and makes it look pretty sleek with the orange kind of afterglow or shadow right there and on the sides. It looks really sleek in my opinion. And the speaker right here is wrapped in cloth. Cloth which makes it look and feel pretty premium but it also is used to give it that IPX. Uh, 7 rated so that's also really nice that it does have the IPX7 rating um, and the cloth is a very nice stretched cloth so it doesn't feel loose or anything like that but it does allow for audio sound to be produced out of it through the two speakers in the front a regular woofer and then the tweeter right here so, so that's really nice that you do have that uh, let's put that to the side and let's just talk about the Sonos Roam real quick again. The Sonos Roam is really nice. Like I said, you do have that multi-room audio with the Wi-Fi. Uh, you can slide into your Sonos ecosystem, but also it does have Bluetooth pairing as well, which uh, it will switch automatically, unlike the Sonos Move, I believe it was, that uh, with that, you had to go into the app setting and actually change it manually, where this will change based on where you are, if it detects a Wi-Fi that it's been connected to, it will automatically connect. If it doesn't, then it will be ready for Bluetooth pairing. Or if you just go into your phone and press Bluetooth, it will automatically connect via Bluetooth that way. So you no fiddling in the app or anything like that in order to uh, do Bluetooth pairing with this, which is really nice. 
Overall though, the speaker is very, very portable and it feels really nice. It's kind of a hard plasticky versus the Charge, which is a, I guess a silicone and a uh, stretched fabric. But on the sides here, on the end caps, you do have the um, silicone. So it does make it kind of able to withstand some drops if you drop it on the side. But I would be careful about dropping it on the actual body itself because it is a hard plastic. So um, other than that, this is a great speaker, um, at least look wise. You do have just your minimalistic Sonos right there. And then that's pretty much it. Um, you do have USB-C charging right here. Um, and so that's really nice that you do have USB-C charging. Uh, the Charge 5 also has USB-C charging. So both of them do use USB-C, which is really nice. I'm glad that JBL finally moved from that micro USB to the USB Type-C. When it comes to con connectivity, this again has Wi-Fi, but it also has the AirPlay 2 and it does have Bluetooth. I was trying to find what Bluetooth version it was, whether it was 5, 5.1, 5.2, but I couldn't figure out or find online what the Bluetooth version was, but I mean, I haven't had any issues with Bluetooth with this device. Um, the Charge 5 here does actually have Bluetooth 5.1, so that's nice that it does have 5.1. I wish that the Flip 5 over there had Bluetooth 5.1 or 5.0, but sadly, uh, JBL decided with that one to keep it with Bluetooth uh, 4.2. But anyways, the Charge 5 at least is a little bit future-proofed with the Bluetooth 5.1. Um, again, like I said, it has USB-C charging and it does charge other devices as well, hence the name JBL Charge 5. So um, it's really nice. And then right here, if you can see it right there, uh, you do have your base radiators that is more of a, uh, I guess, a aesthetic um, option or visual thing rather than it helping with music. But it does look really, really cool when you do have music playing um, through this. And I mean, it does help move, I guess, some um, air through the speaker. So that way it does give you that bigger bass. But we're going to talk about uh, that in a little bit. So, uh, again, the size-wise, it is considerably larger, the JBL versus the Sonos. But I will say that overall, it's not too bad. The Sonos is really nice because you can just take it and throw it in your gym bag. Or you can put it in that little water bottle pouch that is in your backpack if you want to. With the Charge 5, you would definitely stretch out that water bottle uh, pouch if you try to fit this in there. But you can fit it in a gym bag if you want. I would just be careful with the base radiators, uh, whether or not you want to just throw that in there. Or you can put it in your backpack, but again, careful of loose objects in your backpack because you want to be careful with your base radiators right there. But other than that, this is also a portable speaker. It is uh, bigger than the Sonos Roam, so just be aware of that. Uh, I would say this is a ultra portable speaker and this is just a portable speaker or a small portable speaker and a portable speaker. But anyways, it, it's not too heavy, but it does have some heft. I would say um, if you wanted to act like it's a football, you could, but I would not throw it. It is nice and I do like the fact that you do have that nice um, cylinder uh, shape almost like this and I did notice that when you place it on a table the, the base radiators kind of go at a slight angle right there. A really cool feature I think when it comes to charging because we did talk about USB-C for both of them but when it comes to charging on the Sonos Roam, like I said in the Flip 5 and the versus the Sonos Roam, you can actually place this on a Qi wireless enabled charger and it will go ahead and charge the speaker. So this does have Qi wireless enabled charging, which is really cool. It's something new, I think, for the Bluetooth speaker game. I don't think I've ever seen a Bluetooth speaker that can charge via wirelessly. Um, they're all either micro USB, lightning, or USB type C. So it's really cool that that Sonos has placed that feature into this um, just in case you want that feature. This also has uh, a microphone built in so you can take calls, um, answer calls, stuff like that with this, but it also gives you the feature of you can use your Google Assistant or your Amazon ALEXA or anything like that. You can use that with this with this device if you want. Um, I'm not, I don't think that the Charge uh, 5 has 
uh, speakerphone capabilities, which is sad. I wish that they did. I feel like if the Charge 5 and the Flip 5 had speakerphone capabilities, that would just make it that much better of a speaker, in my opinion. But overall, um, this is a great speaker. So let's talk real quick about sound quality, because you buy speakers for sound. And I really like both of these when it comes to sound, however, um, I would say that it really depends on what you're using them for. Uh, the Sonos Roam sounds really good, um, especially for the size of speaker it is. The, the bass gets really low, and the mids and highs are crisp and clear, and you can hear every vocal and everything. I tend to lay in my bed and listen to music while I'm going to sleep. And there's been times when I've heard stuff in my music that I haven't heard and I've been like, wait, what did I just hear? And so it's really cool that with this I can still hear sounds um, that I haven't really heard before. And like I've said in my Flip 5 review a couple months ago that I love sound or music when you can actually just feel it kind of in your gut. Um, almost it's it just that detail of music and all that and the Sonos Roam definitely makes you feel like that um, even though it is small and the speaker itself uh, doesn't put out a whole lot of bass uh, you can just feel every detail and so like with vocals or really with uh, cellos like that low cello sound or the string bass or anything like that you can really feel it almost feels like you can feel the the lowness of the cello or the string bass but this speaker sounds really really good especially for the size however if you're wanting to play it out really loud I would definitely say be careful because uh, the mids and highs are great and they still sound really good but the bass starts to get a little muddied once you get in that upper volume um, and because of the size and because of the housing enclosure, I would definitely say that the bass um, has a limit. So it hits that wall and then that's just it. After that, it becomes really muddied. And so I would just say if you're planning on playing this really loud or you want super, super, super bass, um, I would stay away from this because this does give you some good bass, but it's very limited, I guess, on the amount of bass that it's able to get. Um, if that makes any sense, but overall this sounds really good uh, vocals are very detailed and uh, The sound is just balanced and within the app you can actually tweak it however you want uh, sound wise um, And all that to be more vocal focused or I guess treble focused um, And stuff like that. So that's really cool that you do have that option within the Sonos app as well um, so moving on to the charge 5 this speaker this is a big boy speaker uh, when it comes to portability because again it is a, a portable speaker but I would definitely say it's probably up in the larger range of portable speakers but uh, sound wise this sounds amazing um, if it wasn't so large I guess I would just take this with me everywhere along with I mean I also worry about the bass radiators too fitting it in my backpack and all that but um, this is a great sounding speaker especially for that $179.99 price tag uh, I've compared this with other speakers that cost even more and I really do believe that this speaker uh, really sounds comparable if not better than a lot of those other speakers like the Bose um, sound link back here that I have as well uh, it, it just sounds really really good the mids and highs are amazing you can hear them you can hear the details and voices and in instruments and the bass is just uh, a crazy amount of bass especially for the size I uh, put this in my friend's house and we just play some music and you can almost feel the walls kind of shake a little bit if that makes any sense which is crazy because of the size but like he was like I'm surprised I can hear, I can almost feel the wall shake and, and that says a lot for something this size um, sitting in a room, about a, a medium sized bedroom to make him feel like the walls were kind of shaking slightly. It's not going to be like I have a complete subwoofer but it does give you great amount of bass and it does look really cool too with the bass radiators right here as you can see and so it does look cool and it sounds really really neat um, and the bass is just really deep and gets really low um, but the sound of this also the mids and highs again are really good because you do have your speaker here your main speaker and then you have a tweeter up here so you do get that separation of your vocals from your instruments as well along with your 
bass right there. So I do really like the speaker. Um, I would definitely say this is a great overall speaker, indoor, outdoor, uh, work site, anything like that. This is just a really great speaker. Um, but uh, again, the Sonos is a really great speaker too. And this tends to be my go-to speaker for throwing in my backpack if I'm going to a friend's house or if I'm going somewhere else. Um, going camping or wherever I tend to just take this and throw it in my backpack because it's portable it's light and it sounds amazing it used to be that I would do that with my flip 5 back there but I was always worried that the base radiators would get punctured or anything like that but this I don't have to worry about that so that's really nice but which one is better for you um, it really in my opinion just depends on what you're using it for if you're using wanting a speaker for outside to fill up the outside area with good sound I would definitely say the charge 5 is the better speaker also if you are thinking that you might be using it for a while and you might need to charge like your phone or a pair of headphones or something like that the charge 5 definitely because again you do have that charging port back here that you can charge other devices but if you're if you have the Sonos ecosystem already or you're in the Sonos ecosystem already uh, this speaker is great it just slides right in there with the rest of your Sonos ecosystem I have a beam um, in the living room and it just sounds really good and uh, I can go ahead and do multi-room audio with this and the Sonos beam so that's really cool as well but if you're also just sitting this in like your living room or something, you're entertaining and you're just sitting this there, it sounds pretty good in my opinion. So if it's a larger room, maybe not as much, but if you just want a medium sized room, like a medium sized living room, or if you're just entertaining and you just want some background noise, the Sonos is going to be a great speaker for you as well. So um, price wise, uh, these are very good, especially for the price of both of these. I don't think that you would be sad if you picked one over the other. Uh, they are both really good speakers. Um, I uh, would definitely say that, again, I tend to go for the Sonos whenever I am in a rush and just picking up a speaker um, because it sounds great. It's super portable and I don't have to worry about the sides or the base radiators. But if I am deciding I'm gonna be outside for a long time and I want some good sound and I want to just chill or if I'm taking a shower or anything like that, I tend to go for the uh, JBL Charge 5 because this sounds really good. It fills up the room or it fills up the outside where I'm at, like a little bubble. And it just sounds amazing. And uh, the just, it being IPX7 uh, rated uh, allows it to not have to worry about rain or anything like that. Um, but uh, this I would definitely say is more of an indoor speaker and this would be more of an outdoor speaker but you can use it indoors as well. So um, overall both of these speakers are great especially for the price that you can get them. Uh, $169.99, $179.99 but you can find it for cheaper. Um, depending on the season or the time of year uh, but overall these are great speakers and it just depends on what you want to use it for or what your intended purpose of these speakers are so that has been my Sonos Roam versus JBL Charge 5 speaker comparison if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more go ahead and subscribe hit that bell icon to be notified when I post another video um, I plan on posting a Beats studio buds video pre, uh, review video pretty soon so look out for that and then i know b and o just released or just announced their new eq buds which i'm super excited about and i actually have uh, subscribed to be notified for when they may are made available and so hopefully I will get those and I can do an unboxing of them and then kind of test them out and do a review on those. So stay tuned for those videos as well. I'm very excited for uh, this coming season. It's a great time for tech um, tech en enthusiasts. So stay, stay tuned. We're going to have some great videos being pushed out. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, just stay safe out there with everything going on and uh, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.